Hi, this is Rich Coles from Productive Project Solutions. The purpose of this video is to provide you with a quick overview of the time and duration options in a Gantt chart in Smartsheet. So let's have a look. So here I've got a time plan and I've pre-populated it with a few of the durations which I want to run you through. So you can see I've got 1M and in Smartsheet that means one minute. Here I've got 60 minutes which is equivalent of one hour. And then I can put in one day, and then I can put in one week. And this way then, you've got a whole variety of durations that you can have. Now, if I put in one month, you'll see that it doesn't recognize month in Smartsheet. So all we need to do, if you want a month, is I just change that to four weeks. If you work on a weekly basis, that works well for there. So, why am I showing this? Because some people I speak to um, want to actually use it in a much more granular level than on a weekly basis, on a daily basis here. So this is why I've kind of broken it down onto the minutes piece. Now, what I've built in here also is an interesting function where you can actually see what time it's talking about. So on this particular project setting, I've got it set up. So if I go to the working time, it's got eight hours. And so what it's worked out is if I go to edit, um, so this is the working time and this is therefore going the start of the working day is 8 a.m. And therefore and it's an eight hour day from there. So I'm going to press cancel and come out of here and so say cancel. So on this bit, if I put one minute, you can see and I've added in a little um, formula here. So if I want to actually see the time that this runs for, then this is all calculated within the timings here. And I've got uh, dependencies enabled on this so you can see the dependencies. So by adding the, um, this formula in here, which is literally just a case of saying, what is happening in that, that what, this one here? I'm turning the date into text. So let me just show you the formula here. So I'm just saying start at row. And if I, if I get rid of the speech marks afterwards, start at row, it'll say invalid because it's saying, well, that should be a date. So if I now put the speech marks in, then you'll see then that gives it the time. So it's saying that's got a time value associated with it. And because it's saying it's one minute. So what I've done here is I've said, what's the start date time? And then I've said, what's the start finish time here? So what I'm going to do is going to turn this to a column formula now. So it's locked. And then you can see one minute. So if I now change this to be five minutes, 5M, you can see it starts at eight and finishes at 8.04 with the next task finishing, starting at 8.05 for five minutes. If I now change this to be 60 minutes, Therefore, 8 to 8.59, and the next ta task is one hour as well, or 60 minutes, and that's 9 to 9.59, and then you see the next one is one hour, and that's 10 to 10.59. Then paint walls, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that two hours, for example, and you can see then that starts at 11 to 13.59, because there's the, again, it's assuming a pause for a lunch break in between, no doubt, um, and if I put another one hour here, Therefore, it's going to say um, 14 to 14.59 and then replace furniture. I'm going to put in that to be one hour as well. So you can see, therefore, that whole task has taken this duration of time. It's taken the day. So a couple of other things that I'm going to just show within this uh, demo. So that's showing you that you've got minutes into hours and you could have days as well, which is more commonly used. So what I've done here also is if you wanted to have this as a task list for someone knowing what time they want to be working um, or the task that they're allocated to the time they're allocated to that particular task. This is why I've created it here. And so what I've got is I've got the task name written down and then I've created a formula in which it's saying take the, let me just show you the formula in edit column formula, convert to cell formula. And then you can see this more effectively here. So what I'm saying in this case is I'm saying, well, show me what the name of the task is and then show me the start time, put a hyphen in between it, and then show me the finish time. So this way then, if, for example, you're going to have this in, for example, um, a in resource management or a resource plan or a report for someone's task list, then this can tell them exactly the time that they are working from to on that particular task there. So again, what it's doing is it's saying, look at the task name and then put in the right, so the last five, uh, digits from this number here, 
put a hyphen and then the last five digits from the finish time here. So that's how that bit works here. And so yeah, there's there's a real a view really just to show you that within the Gantt chart functionality of Smartsheet, you can break it down to be minutes, hours, days, and weeks. Obviously I've got rid of the weeks now, but one week and therefore one day and going back to the hours and then the minutes on that side. So for those who are looking to have a slightly more granular view, I trust that's been useful. And also for those who want to say, well, actually, how can I have this as a task list for my individuals? Then that's useful as well. So thanks for watching and more to follow on this. Bye for now.